series. And I'm also really excited that this suit fits me. Because after three or four weeks in lockdown, I was a bit worried I wouldn't get it on tonight. But the good news is, it's fitting just fine. So all that health eating and exercising uh, out once a day must be paying off. So um, I'm really pleased about that. So all when the couples in this series have, um, I've got three people uh, who I've previously conducted ceremonies for. We're starting off with Amy and Fraser tonight. Uh, and I've got two other couples who are um, delighted that I've asked them to be next. I'm going to try and do a couple of these a week. Um, since I'm not busy conducting ceremonies, of course, uh, during this um, lockdown period. I have been, as you would expect, helping all of my couples having to reschedule uh, their ceremonies. Uh, and we've had um, some great conversations with everybody and all the supplies have been great as well. So we're getting there with that. We just need the lockdown lifted and we can get back on to business. And that's what prompted me to think about what could I do to keep you guys entertained. Um, if any of my couples that I've conducted ceremonies for are watching tonight and you'd like to feature in repeat renditions, then drop me a message uh, and we can look at doing that. I'd love you to be, to want to, to take part, of course. Um, so what's it all about? What's the format going to be? So uh, first of all, I'm going to tell you about the couple that I'm going to feature. Um, I'm going to tell you, of course, where the venue was, what date the, the wedding took place, um, and then I'm going to tell you about when they booked me and how they discovered me as a celebrant. Um, and I'm going to give you, first of all, a bit of an extract from their, the start of their ceremony. Not the full thing, because obviously it can, uh, the introduction is maybe five or seven, eight minutes long. I've already bespoke to the couple, but I've picked a few paragraphs out of Amy and Fraser's, and I'll do that each time I do one of these repeat renditions. Um, I'm going to tell you the couple's story, word for word though, and I've got express permission of course from Amy and Fraser tonight to do that. And then I'm also going to share with you uh, something we call Four Reasons, and this is when we ask our couples um, at Fuse to tell us three reasons why they love each other, and a fourth reason, the number one thing that drives them crazy about each other. Of course, a bit of fun really, it really lightens the mood and helps the couple to relax. And the, the really quirky part about it is neither of them have heard these reasons up to now. What happens is they get the, they send me the three reasons, or four reasons in this case, and of course I keep them a secret until the big day, which is really fun. I'm also going to, during the format, tell you about what symbolic gestures the couple I'm featuring had in their ceremony. So, First of all, let me tell you about tonight's couple. So um, we've got Amy and Fraser, uh, and they first met me, or I, and I first met them at a wedding fair show at the Trades Hall in Glasgow, and that was back in January of 2018. Uh, shortly after that, a few weeks after that, Amy got back in touch with me and secured the booking, which was really great, and then we started working on the ceremony a bit closer to the time. So it was about 10 months or so before the big date. The venue actually was the Trades Hall in Glasgow, so they not only met and booked me from a wedding show there, that's where their venue was. Um, and the date of the wedding was the 27th of October 2018. Um, and as you uh, can see from the date, the 27th of October, it was very close to Halloween, and Amy and Fraser actually had a bit of a Halloween theme um, wedding where they had um, uh, table lanterns, pumpkins cut out, um, and all the kind of Halloween stuff as you would expect really uh, at that time of year. And that's how they decorated the, ta the, the tables, names, etc. Really fun. And in terms of symbolic gestures, Amy and Fraser, first thing they had during the ceremony was the candle lighting gesture. Now you might have seen some photos on my Facebook and Instagram page of that. Um, and they used and asked both their mums to take part. It's a beautiful gesture. It's where we get both mums to come to the ceremony area and the, uh, the groom's mum, uh, the bride's mum, or the bride and bride or groom and groom's mum um, light a candle that represents their uh, warmth and love for their son or daughter. And then after that, the bride and groom, groom and groom, bride and bride, whatever the situation is, uh, take the candles and light the central um, main unity candle. Uh, we also did a, a poem read out 
uh, by uh, Amy's friend Amy. Fair enough, it was handpicked by her, which is really cool. It was called, uh, if I remember, um, he never leaves the seat up, or he always leaves the seat up. Um, and I think you can all guess what seat we're talking about there. Uh, we also had a really beautiful uh, and heartfelt gesture called a parent's well-wishing, um, also known as a, a question of entrustment, and that's where we, uh, I ask both sets of parents or guardians a question of entrustment, effectively asking uh, them, do they entrust their son or daughter uh, to the care and love of the bride or groom, or groom and groom, or bride and bride? Um, it's kind of like the parents... I guess saying their vows before the happy couple say their vows. So it's, um, it's a really nice moment and um, of course Amy, in this occasion Amy and Fraser's uh, parents and guardians really uh, took part and thought it was a lovely gesture so agreed to do that. Uh, and then the final symbolic gesture that Amy and Fraser had was the drinking from the quake. I'm sure you've seen lots of pictures on my page about drinking from the quake. Um, and in this occasion uh, they drank from the quake Prosecco, uh, which is Amy's favourite tipple, I believe. But let me tell you that Fraser sure polished that off also. So uh, there was no uh, no arguments with him. Um, by the end of the ceremony, and I always do the quake ceremony gesture after the signing. Uh, that's kind of where it dates back to Celtic marriage ritual times. It's their first official task as a married couple. Uh, what was especially... Um, fitting for this uh, ceremony for Amy and Fraser is that I stood aside and Amy's brother Neil took over uh, and conducted the quake drinking part of the ceremony, read out the uh, some lovely words about them, um, the quake representing the cup of life and, and um, them drinking and sharing their first drink as a married couple, so uh, a really beautiful uh, gesture. Um, but, uh, you know, without further ado, before I, I start reading out some of the ceremony, I've got it here, um, can I just say thanks to Amy and Fraser for uh, being the, the first one up on my repeat renditions and um, and for allowing me to read out these extracts. Uh, it was really fun and cool. I'd, I'd done a few posts about this yesterday, as you had seen in today, and, and Amy reposted one of them. Uh, and when she reposted it, she put on the bottom a... Uh, you know, we're getting married again tomorrow night. So, Amy and Fraser, I hope you've got a little glass there. And you did promise, and as you all know, I do love a selfie. And Amy and Fraser, you promised me, if you could just get your cameras ready, I'm going to come a bit closer. Um, if you can get a, a selfie of me right now, I'm going to trust that you got it. But if you didn't, can you get one and send it out to me? So, without further ado, I'm going to read you out some of the extracts from Amy and Fraser's ceremony. On the 27th of October, 2018. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is George McLean, and I'm a humanist marriage officer with Fuse Ceremonies. I was delighted when Amy and Fraser asked me to conduct the wedding ceremony for them today. They have chosen to marry in these beautiful surroundings, and it gives me great pleasure to welcome you all here to the Trades Hall in Glasgow to witness and share in the joy of the marriage of Amy Carruthers and Fraser Castles. Each of you are playing a special part in today's ceremony, but none more so than the wedding party. We have our best man Andrew, bridesmaids Kate and Cora, ushers Alan and Graham, and of course a special thanks to Amy's dad Gus who had the honour of walking her down the aisle today to Fraser. Amy and Fraser have chosen a humanist marriage ceremony because it provides them with the freedom to express in their own words what marriage means to them. No matter what form the ceremony takes though, the principal purpose is the same. To recognise that two people have found each other, chose to marry and to spend their lives together. Amy and Fraser also want today to be a day to acknowledge their friends and family. The friends who have shared with them the good times and the challenging times, and the family who have guided them through their early years and continue to support them today. So in committing themselves to each other in marriage, 
Amy and Fraser are promising to enrich their lives together. They are conscious, of course, of the size and the seriousness of the responsibility in which they are taking on. But with the support of all their family and friends here today, they know this challenge and responsibility will feel that bit lighter. And so to our happy couple story and the journey that's brought them here today. Cast your minds back to 2006, when internet speeds had just broke from dial-up to early broadband. Only 68% of the UK adults used the web. Today, it's probably 99%. Facebook was in its infancy, and most notably, it was when our happy couple, Amy and Fraser, first met whilst both at university. Strathclyde Uni's student union was the setting for Amy and Fraser's first encounter. They were both at the union one night with their respective friends. One of Amy's friends knew one of Fraser's friends and recognised them from meeting them at a gig the week before, so went over for a chat. Some intrigue then set in between Amy and Fraser. They got chatting for a while, in fact, the rest of the night. The next thing they knew, they had found each other on, wait for it, MySpace. Yes, you heard me, MySpace. Remember, it's 2006. They then spent a couple of weeks chatting over, wait for it, MSN Messenger. Yes, I said MSN Messenger. Again, remember, it's 2006. The initial reason for chatting was to set up their two friends together. Little did they know, their friends were trying to do exactly the same for them. Fraser eventually got Amy's number and invited her and a friend on a night out, which was basically code for Amy, I fancy you rotten. They met again after that night and this time the date was sealed with a kiss, which started off their relationship proper. Their relationship then grew from strength to strength and things soon moved on to them arranging to meet both sets of each other's family. Amy met Fraser's mum Pauline and stepdad Ian and was introduced to Strathaven and a whole new group of friends through countless nights out at the pub and various house parties. Fraser met Amy's brother Neil at tea in the park and then Amy's parents, Fiona and Gus, a few months later, whilst he was sporting blue and black hair. A great first impression, eh? Any comments, Fiona and Gus? Well, we are all here today, so everything must have been alright in the end, despite the hair. Whether abroad or in Glasgow, Amy and Fraser love to go clubbing together. The sub-club, in particular, holds a special memory for them, as it was where they first told each other, I love you. Although they did tell me that this probably was fuelled by the amount of alcohol in their system that night, but nevertheless a memorable moment. They've also spent lots of holidays away together, going to places like London, Barcelona, Milan, Tenerife, Dublin and of course the clubbing capital of Ibiza, many, many, many times. Their relationship was ready for the next step, so they decided to move in together and then bought their first flat in November of 2015. They enjoyed setting up home together and their flat played host to lots of gatherings with friends and family. A lot of you here today, of course. Fraser proposed to Amy exactly a year later after moving into the flat. It happened after work on a Friday night. Amy came home to Fraser down on one knee in their living room and he asked her to marry her. Although he did attempt to put the ring on the wrong finger due to his nerves. Fraser then surprised Amy by telling her that he'd booked them a long weekend in London leaving the very next day to celebrate their engagement. 
So thank goodness the answer was yes from Amy. And now almost two years later, they are both here today in these beautiful surroundings, tying the knot. Amy and Fraser truly see today as the start of their forever and are so glad that so many people are here to share the special moment with them as they start the next chapter in their story together. Ladies and gentlemen, let's hear it for our happy couple, Amy and Fraser's story. During their time together, Fraser and Amy have come to understand, respect and love each other dearly. And I asked them to independently give me three reasons why they love the other. And I also asked them for a fourth reason. And that's the one thing that drives them mad about the other. So I'm now going to reveal their answers. So starting with Fraser's three reasons why he loves Amy. The first reason I love Amy is because of her personality. Ever since I first met Amy, her amazing personality was evident. She's such a fun person to be around. Her personality makes you want to spend so much time with her. And in my case, the rest of my life. She's generally just a happy and joyous person and makes my life better. And reason number two is I love Amy is how thoughtful and kind she is. She always does things without even thinking about it to try to make my life easier and happier and not just me, everyone in her life. She'll always go out of her way and put in a lot of time and effort while she's doing so. And reason number three is that I love Amy and how naturally beautiful she is. In particular, her eyes and her smile. One of the first things that attracted me to Amy was her big eyes, as they seemed to just draw me in. But the one thing Fraser says that drives him mad is that when she's brushing her teeth before she goes to bed at night, she'll always come through to the bedroom and sit on the end of the bed with her electric toothbrush, which results in Fraser having to turn the TV up for a few minutes whilst the toothbrush is on. Fraser says it's not a big thing, but it's really annoying. I hope you've sorted that out now, uh, Fraser uh, and Amy. Um, I'm sure you have. And Amy's three reasons why she loves Fraser. The first reason I love Fraser is that he makes me laugh a lot. Whether it's with his stupid jokes or random words, we have the same brain and just say the same things. He always makes me laugh when he's very engrossed in a sporting event. There's always lots of swear words, jumping up and down and occasionally some tears. The second reason I love Fraser is for his ability to give me the best foot massages. He sometimes complains about it, but they're so good I just keep on asking him. And the third reason I love Fraser is that we always have such a good time together. He's my best friend. I just love a random nights in when it's just us, when we're dancing around the flat with the tunes on, or if we're out in the town and dancing with the tunes on. But the one thing that drives Amy mad about Fraser is the way that he can munch through all the sweets in the flat as soon as she's bought them and before she gets a chance to get some herself. A box of ice lollies, for example, can be gone in a flash, despite me keeping them for the occasional treat. It may be better for my waistline, but I'd still like the odd one. And again, I hope you've sorted that out, Amy and Fraser. So followers, that's it. That's the first repeat renditions um, I'd love to hear your comments. If you want to put some comments below um, at the moment, I can read them later on. I'm going to repost the video anyway on my IGTV on Facebook page uh, a wee bit later on tonight. But I'd love to know what you thought of the format. I hope you got something out of it. If you're thinking of booking me, then um, please 
let me know. Uh, I can answer any questions, of course. If you're one of my existing couples and you've booked me uh, and we've not got um, a chance to... It's cl not close to your date yet, then I hope that gives you even more confidence um, in terms of um, uh, the fact that you've booked me and what's possible with your ceremony. Uh, and also, um, if you've one of my past couples and you want to take part in repeat renditions, then please drop me a note. Um, and last thing, Amy and Fraser, thank you so much for being first up. Um, I'm going to do one towards the end of the week. Next up will be a fantastic couple called Francis and Donald. Um, I'm going to feature next. But uh, I hope you found it useful, guys. Have a fantastic rest of the bank holiday, and I'll see you again soon. Thanks.